So what we do with ECU stuff and repairs and tuning and mobilized deletes and sort of renewing used components isn't not the right, what's the right way? It's not like a, I mean, there's no endorsed official way of doing these things. It's all trial and error and learning and constant. You know, the, the dealers don't do these things. The manufacturers of the modules like this is Bosch. They don't do immobilizer removals or tuning. Um, so a lot of it is trial and error. So for example, this one is one I have done a mobilizer delete on for a vehicle outside. Um, had some problems, a Fiat, Citroen, Peugeot, not sure, Fiat engine in it. Um, immobilizer delete, no problem. You get a, a fault code set, which brings the engine light on. So we do a code delete, um, but we're still getting the engine light. So we need to look into it. So a lot of these things do take time, patience, help from people all over the place. People who know far more than me on certain, like people, the community can be great. Um, obviously you, and you pay people, people have to make a living. So people who, who help with the file and stuff like that. So this is one example of a, it hasn't gone wrong. We've done the mobile delete, but I'm not happy with it because the customer's going to get a, an engine light on, uh, which will, you know, some people are fine with that, but I don't think that's a good idea. Engine light is there to let customers know there's a problem, get the vehicle checked. So if that's always on and he does have a problem, he's not going to know. So we'll sort that out. But like I say, there, um, it's a lot of trial and error, some of this stuff, because there's no official ways of doing this type of uh, job. Um, it's all, you know, you could have 10 of these in a row, nine of them be perfect and one like this. It's, you know, it's how it is. Um, so if you're coming into this line of work, you need to understand that um, and charge accordingly. That's why you have to charge a reasonable amount of money. It's, it's, it's not a two second job. And even when it is, you know, the next one won't be. So you have to have a, a proper pricing strategy. Uh, and if you're a customer, you must realize that the dealer can't get rid of your immobilizer. It's a very specialist sort of thing. It's um, you, you need to understand there could be several attempts and people might have to go to your vehicles a couple of times and your vehicle might be off road for a little while. But still, it works out cheaper than replacing all the immobilizer stuff on certain vehicles. Some vehicles it's cheaper to fix and quicker. So this is the problem um, that I have had on this particular one. Um, this had an immobilizer delete due to um, an immobilizer box issue, which is quite an expensive repair on a vehicle this old. It does say oil high there, so the customer needs to sort that out somewhere else. Uh, so ignition on, you see you get your engine light, your battery light, all that sort of stuff. You fire it up, obviously, because I have got rid of the immobilizer, no drama, no problems, no, no faults in diagnostically, but when you rev it, engine light comes on after the first rev and stays on. Uh, you can turn her off, fire her up again. I'm ignoring that squealing noise from underneath again. That's a mechanical issue, nothing to do with me. That's a customer to sort elsewhere. And there you go, engine light comes on. So let's see if we can get that sorted. So what we've got here is a Bosch EDC 15C7. This is found in the Fiat engine, Fiat, Peugeot's, uh, Citroen vans, usually 2.2 and 2.8. 2.7, I can't remember what the big one is. What I found with these, I don't know to say for everybody, it might just be my bad luck, is if it's in a 2.8, you can do the OBD. I've never successfully been able to read one of these in a 2.2 uh, OBD, so I've always take them out. Um, so I will show you how you read them uh, on the bench. It's pretty easy. So first stage is obviously we take the we take the back off and then we take the uh, board completely out of the casing because we need to get to our flash, which is that guy there with the white sticker on him. Um, you can then take that off and put it in a programmer or like I'm going to do now again is read it in circuit and write it in circuit. Um, so we need to boot it, not across the room, but put it into boot mode. Um, I'm not going to bother with another read, I've got a good reader and then try and write some different files, put it back in the vehicle, testing, 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 testing until we get it right. But every time we test it, every time we write it, we need to rebuild it and put it in the vehicle. I'm not going to throw a bare circuit board like that. Um, in case it moves around and touches something or gets damaged. So it is quite time consuming. On a side note, one thing I don't like about my office is I need a lot more light. I need to sort that out at some point. Um, so there we go. So we've got it all pinned out with our breakout box from Chip Tuning Shop, which is great. Uh, or sorry, break, breakout cable. Um, and we have our uh, on our boot pin on our flash chip. Um, so what we do is when we go into programming mode, we just need to give that an earth for a moment to, to set it into boot mode. Um, 
but I need my hands for that bit, so I'm going to set that up and then um, read it out again, or write into it again, one of the two. In this instance, we'll use, uh, for reading and writing, we'll use MPPS. It's a great tool. Don't buy one of the fake ones. The real one is so good, um, and they're not that expensive, like, I don't know, £1,800 for OBD or whatever. Um, so we've got it all pinned out. We've got MPPS open. No, it's not under the vehicle on these. No, don't worry about that. That was me again testing it on the vehicle um, and not able to get a read. Um, it's under generic, I think. Where is generic? The letter G would help. Um, uh, where do we find him again? Here we go. So it even tells us that we need to ground out um, The, um, the, 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 ugh, the boot pin. There we go, that's the word. So I'm gonna do that now, I do need my hands. So, um, but basically what we're gonna do is, is run aground to that little fellow right there on that pin. And there we go, just writing the file in. It's quite a small file, um, so it doesn't take very long. Uh, it's like five, 12 kilobytes, something like that. So it's a quick little write, and then I'll plug it in and see what it does. Right, so this is a different solution. Um, we fire up. Again, the mobilizer is still sorted, that side of things. Um, but unfortunately, if we rev it, uh, we get a fault lights on. But at least now, uh, unlike the previous solution, which had, by the looks I went through the file, had um, extra fault code deletes, which we don't want to delete things that we don't have to delete, we have somewhere to go. The vehicle actually has a fault. But again, see, this is, this is the problem with software uh, and, and modifying things, we'd inadvertently masked, masked an unrelated fault because we never saw this vehicle running before, it was sat with an immobiliser issue. So we do have an airflow system fault, so now all I've got to do is check out that and let the customer know, you know, that's an entirely different job. Um, they will need to cough up for that or they can carry on driving it or whatever, but don't blame me if your engine lights. Great.